Hello guys and welcome back to another mCritter tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is how to fix the rotation for certain elements like entities and basically they're when you set up the the actual animations for the um I forget what it's called it's the actual models themselves basically what happens is it overrides certain files like the the rotation and there is a fix for this I was helped by uh, one of our moderators on MC toolkit so let's see if I can find them uh, Kenders I th Klenders I can't really pronounce it um, but I'll link to his channel in the description so if you want to go check out his channel he has a few tutorials on it but um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, we're going to be looking in Blockbench how to fix this issue and basically what I've uh, learned from his suggestion. So let's go into Blockbench and then we'll go ahead and we'll start with setting up a simple model for something unique. So we're going to need a Java, um, pardon me, modded entity. So we're going to need that one. And then what we're going to need to give it a unique file name and a unique model identifier. So this needs to be unique compared to anything used in your mod uh, itself. So make sure that it is not something that you've already used. Use lowercase. Uh, if you're using spaces, use underscores, not dashes or any other spaces or anything like that. So um, also try to avoid using numbers if possible so like name things just with text i find that it works better that way uh the export version you'll also need to set up for the type of thing now i think mcp is for 1.15 Mo moge maps for 1.15 and 1.16 i don't think work i if i remember correctly uh 1.14 same thing uh one point uh 14 MCP is probably what you're going to need for that one. And then there's uh, 1.7 or 1.7 and 1.13 is the other versions. But uh, if you're on 1.18 uh, or 1.17, then you're going to need to use Moj Maps. So those are the different versions that you're going to have to kind of. I don't know why they have the different ones for the Moj Maps for the other versions. They don't work with MCreator. Uh, just the 1.18 and up from what I can take from it. But um, let's give it a file name. We'll just call it test1. And we'll call the model identifier test1 as well. Uh, this is important to keep the name the same. And then we're just going to create that. Now, over on the right-hand side, we have a few different options. We have add group. We have add cube. And then there's uh, more options. Those are uh, enabled, I think, by default. And then over on this side, we have our textures which I'll explain a little bit in a little while and then we have like import and create new texture option there and we also have the paint aspect on the top right corner so right now what we need to do is create a cube <clears throat> so we can basically start shaping something so say we want to create I don't know like a simple aspect of something maybe like a player or a player model or something like that. So we're gonna need about four by 12 for the actual height. We're gonna bring that over to about here. Now, you're not gonna actually set up the pivot points for these elements at all. You just want the actual location for it. So this is gonna be a leg and that's going to be another leg. We'll set them all up in their own groups in just a second. So we also need a couple arms, so we're going to put this arm over here, bring that up to about there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that, put that one over there, then we need the body. So the body is the same width as the arms, so we can just basically expand that over. And then we need the head itself, so the head is generally 8x8, eight eight. Uh, so we'll just bring that down a little bit to eight and then we'll bring it forward i think it's about two or something there we go all right so that's our general player uh model now we might want to actually add different uh poses for it uh this would be really handy for things like entity states i've done a tutorial on that i'll try to remember to link to it in the um 
description as well as the card on the screen. It should be up right now. So we might want to actually give these parts different names just so we know what one is which. So this is our head. So I'm just going to call it head. And then what we need is our body. So this is our body. And then we have our, I think that would be our left arm. So left. All these names should be lowercase. If you're using different words, again, use underscores and then a word followed by it. So left arm and the other one should be our right arm. And then that should be our left leg. And that should be our right leg. All right, so now that part's done, we can start setting up the group. So I'm gonna actually rearrange some of these just quickly, move uh, the arms and the legs a little bit different locations just so it's a little bit easier to follow. So we'll start with our head. Uh, we need to actually create a main group for this one. We're gonna call it, uh, we're gonna call it a head bone. And, but what this basically means is it's the, um, pivot point where the the main group is so basically what we're going to do for this is we're going to put our head block into this block right here and what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to kind of group things together but inside that block what we need to actually do is figure out where the actual pivot point for this uh, location is uh, we need to set up the pivot point for this group so when we do create the next group uh, it will actually work with this the settings so we're going to move this up a little bit and from there what we can do is we can kind of figure out where our height is so i think it's about 24 blocks or something like that so we might want to go ahead and set 24 for a y-axis that should be somewhere uh yeah it's right right on the um location right here so right on the where the neck would be that's the proper location so what we're going to do is we're going to lower that head part and this should stay the same for the pivot point if it's not still 24 or the same number then you'll have to update that and kind of play around with the motion where you're moving it so in that case uh we have it in the right location so that's fine uh, now we need to create another group inside of this group and we're going to call it something a little bit different. So we're going to call it head sub bone. And what this will do is it will fix that issue with the, the rotation. We're going to actually use this group, the inner group, for basically the rotation and stuff. So if we want to rotate the head a specific direction, then we're going to do it with this group instead of the main group. So the reason why M Creator overrides the original group is it will set up the animation and stuff with that one. So we need to actually set the subgroup for actually our, our default rotation. We don't need to set up the um, the actual rotation or pivot point. The pivot point and the rotation for our actual head models or our, our cubes should actually be zero and zero. So you shouldn't actually have any uh, anything set for the pivot point or rotation for those ones. But your groups should have the same pivot point for both of them, but the inner group should have the rotation. Hopefully that makes sense. As you can kind of see with the settings that I've set up here, you can kind of see how it basically works. So the pivot point is the same, same as the main group. So if we click on the main group, it is 24 or 0, 24, 0. If we click on the subgroup, it's 0, 24, 0. So that's important to have the same pivot point. Or if you do it with different one compared to this one, then it's going to actually start flipping all over the place, like literally rotating around your actual NT. It's not going to look proper. So you're going to have to actually set up the uh, same pivot point for that. Uh, the actual mesh, though, the cube itself, does not require any rotation or any pivot point. Uh, everything is done through the groups themselves. So hopefully that will work uh, for your models and stuff. I've tested it several times with the mod that I actually have open right now, and it seems to be perfectly fine the way that this system is set up. So let's go ahead and just finish up 
creating the other groups and I'll put the bones and uh, stuff together. Now generally the arms you would have your shoulder part right at the center of these two blocks or I think there's four blocks so there would be a uh, pivot point right here, about here, pivot point right about here and then the legs would be right where the actual uh, top of the leg is so those are where your other pivot points are if you're interested so I'll get that part done and then I'll cut back in when it's um, ready to move on to the texturing and stuff all right so I got basically the structure all set up I added a couple extra groups just to kind of, or cubes just to kind of extra like decorate of things that will basically be texturing um, so to kind of explain how it works is we have our uh, main groups. So the the two most important things are the subgroups and the main groups. So the subgroups are basically going to be overrided by M Creator. The subgroups are going to carry your rotation and pivot point. Both are going to actually carry the pivot point. So if we right click on this one, you can see that the pivot point is 24. If we click on that one, it's also 24. Uh, if we go to something that has rotation like the arm, then you can see that the the main group if we click on it twice it will just highlight the main group it says 6 and 22 if we right click on this one twice uh, then you can see that it's 6 22 and our rotation is set to 50. so with the right and left group or arms i have basically set up uh, well, just the left one, actually. So the left one, I've added a extra cube called a box. As you can see, that there is no rotation for either of these cubes. Uh, the head also has a head and a head overlay. So I'm going to actually add some hair or something to it uh, as a head overlay just to kind of decorate it a little bit more. But uh, you might want to add overlays for different parts of your actual model but uh, generally this is how it works if you want to test the rotation then what you're going to do is you're going to actually use your um, rotation group so the subgroup and then you're going to actually test to see how it actually rotates now this will affect the position when you're setting it up in M Creator. so if you want it to rotate up and down then this would be your x-axis uh, if you want it to rotate left and right, so like this axis, then it would be that one. So this would be your Z axis. And then if you wanted it to rotate the other way, then it would be the Y axis. So it's going to totally reflect on what axis you want to rotate on. So in our case, uh, the arms are on the X axis where the legs, I think, might be on the same. So let's test the legs just to make sure. Yes, so they're on the x-axis as well. So we'll need to set up those for that one. Our head is generally set on the, I think, the y-axis, but it, it has optional x and z axis as well. Uh, we're just going to use the default head locate, rotation because that's what is set up for this actual model. So now that we have that, uh, all our different components and stuff like that, we need to actually create a texture. I'm just going to use a texture template. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the uh, default pixel density to 16. That's fine the way it is. We're going to call it what our actual entity is called. So our identifier name. So it's test one. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and just uh, keep make sure that it's on power of two size and uh, we could compress the template. Uh, usually just leave the default settings as um, it works like normal. So I'm going to just leave it like that. And then we're going to create it. And then we have all these different components. You can kind of see where everything is. Uh, these have to do with our, I believe, our head and our head overlay. We'll have to see which one is which. So our head overlay is that one. Our head is over here. That's the, the box that I created. And then we have, I think these are our arms and the legs, so I'm not sure which ones are which. So that's a leg, and that one's a leg as well. So, oh no, this one's an arm, so that one's an arm, and then that one is a arm as well. And this one down here is a leg, so arm and arms. So these two are arms, those two are legs. Uh, that's our chest. So uh, you might want to actually set this up in a little bit different manner. 
Um, if you have like uh, more space or whatever, then you could basically go ahead and um, create a different size image and then rearrange these in a way that would be easier to texture. But I'm not going to do that in this tutorial because that's a, probably a project for its own. I am going to go to the paint mode though and just kind of texture certain parts where I know that it will be uh, crucial for actually texturing. So for example, if I wanted to give them a, say a blue shirt, I'll just go and grab some blue and then we can go ahead and use the paint tool to kind of just paint these parts over here. And then what we want to do is we want to actually disable the main group. We'll just hide it so we can get under. And we want to disable the legs as well. So we're going to just target the main group for both of these. Well, one of them. Both should be fine. So that will be the blue shirt. Uh, we might want to decorate the actual part there. So we're going to actually disable the body, um, which is this one. And then we can basically use our brush tool to just kind of decorate this part right here. And we'll go around. Um, it's just going to be a rough draft, but I'm going to texture it basically using this technique. And then when I'm all done, then I'll cut back in. And then you guys can see what basically it looks like. As you can see, it's updating on the texture side as well. You can also use this as just a default template for when you actually bring it into like an other application like paint.net or uh, a sprite or something like that, which will allow you to do a little bit more detail than what is currently provided. So you can always switch over to another application after just kind of getting a rough draft like for your textures and stuff like that, which is basically what I'm doing. Uh, if you wanted to add more detail, then you could definitely do that in another application. So uh, this one isn't uh, always the best to actually work with. Like I prefer using pay.net because it adds better support for colors, but um, yeah, so we'll do that quickly and then I'll cut back in. All right, so I got the texturing all done. Uh, it's just really basic texture. I didn't invest too much time into it, just basically outlining the um, things. I actually spent more time on the hat and the uh, the box than anything else. So um, outside of that, uh, let's go ahead and just save our texture so we can click on that little save icon right there. And then we can basically go ahead and save that to our desktop where we'll be basically compiling all the files. You want to make a copy of this, save it as a block bench, because if your mod needs to update, then you will have to basically um, sometimes uh, port to a different um, Minecraft version for the Moj map and stuff. So having a extra backup for your actual little model is never a bad idea because then you can just re-export it as a different thing. So we're going to save that one here. And then we're also going to export um, as Java entity. Now this again has to be on a modded entity workspace or you're not going to have a Java entity option. So make sure you have that. If you're not under the right workspace, uh, I think you can convert project and this will basically allow you to select the right workspace for the work that you have. So we're just going to export and then Java entity and then we're going to save that to our desktop as well. So one thing, the name has to be the same as your uh, project model, your file name, as well as your model identifier name. And you would basically just update your version right here. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go into M creator and then we'll go ahead and import this model. I'll just use this uh, mod that I'm working on as an example. So you guys can kind of see what's going on. So we'll go ahead and go to our desktop where we saved the files. This is a JSON, so that won't work. Uh, we need Java. Uh, then we'll go to our desktop, we'll select the test one entity. And then right here, you can set up your actual animations for your head, uh, all the different groups. So you might notice that the names are the same as the main groups here. So uh, head, bo head bone, uh, body bone, those are at the top list. So head bone body bone, and then you can basically set your animations like that. You might also notice that there is no subgroups in this list. That's because the ones that are going to be overwritten are these groups right here. So that's why we set up our rotations on a subgroup. So we can basically get the rotations for things like the arms and stuff to make sure that they're properly set up. All right, so we'll just set up the animations quickly. So I'm just going to select a head animation 
And then our right at arm should be our right arm for the X. It says actually at Y and Z for the other options. We know that we need X, so we're going to use X as well. Uh, we're going to scroll up and grab the X um, one for the left arm. And then we're also going to use the X one for the right leg and the left leg animations. So I'm going to save animate, save new animation, not keep current animation because that will just basically um, keep whatever's defaults in the application and there isn't any um, animations at all. So we wanna make sure we save the new animations. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to create a entity. I'm just gonna create a really quick one. Uh, we're just gonna to go to living entity, give it a name. Uh, we'll call, call it um, test one to keep it consistent. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new living entity, set our model. So we want test one and then the test one texture. So we haven't actually imported that yet. So we're gonna to have to import that. And then we're going to select our test one. All the other settings, I'm just gonna leave the same. Um, probably set this to creature just so it's a little bit easier to see. And then we'll go ahead and just click through all this. Uh, we'll just have it, um, I want wandering, so it kind of wanders around. And then I want um, to float in water and the other ones. We can just remove the other AI tasks. This will kind of give an idea of how the animation works. Now generally animations only work when the entity is moving, so that's why I have wander enabled. Uh, we'll just disable these two so we can just simply spawn it through spawn egg. So we'll save and then we'll go in game. I'll cut back in when I'm actually in game. Great. So we're currently in game. So we're just gonna place this down. And as you can see, the rotations are properly set up how we expect them to be. So he'll walk around and he'll kind of shake his <laughs> arm around a little bit. <laughs> um, not sure how he's able to hold the box like that with one hand. Kind of just kind of does that. I'm not sure how you would actually fix that because technically the arms go up and down. So you probably have to set the same animation for the right and left arm. So that would probably bring it the same motion that could possibly work. But um, generally the arms swing opposite directions. So that's probably why it's happening like that. But outside of that, um, yeah, that's basically it. So as you can see, the, the rotations are properly set up. Um, sometimes when you don't use this method, it does work. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it does work sometimes. Um, often though, when you re-export or change something and then try importing it again, sometimes it can mess up and not have the proper rotation and they'll be just like actually at the default rotation. So the arms would be at like a 90 degree or something like that for um, either straight out or straight down. It would just randomly choose which one to actually use. So this uh, actually fixes that issue. I've tested it a few times with like a couple different models. Um, I think I have about 10 models that I've tested it with and it, they all work perfectly fine where before they weren't. So hopefully this helps a lot of you with your model creations and stuff like that. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.